Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to talk about is calcium signaling. Okay, so calcium is one of the most important intracellular signals. In fact, with cyclic AMP, those two are probably the most important intracellular signals. They're probably neck and neck with uh, regards to competing for the title of the most important intracellular signal. Okay, so calcium signaling is going to be the topic then for this video. Okay, so let me give you an overview of the different things that we're going to discuss in this video. So we're going to start off with a discussion of the different uh, subcellular compartments uh, and what their concentration of calcium is. Okay, so we'll discuss the concentration of calcium in the extracellular fluid, the concentration of calcium in the cytoplasm, calcium stores in the endoplasmic reticulum, things like that. Then we'll discuss how that equilibrium is maintained. So we'll discuss the pumps uh, and exchanges uh, for calcium on the uh, plasma membrane. Okay, we'll also discuss the circuit pump on the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Okay, uh, then what we'll go on to discuss is store operated calcium entry, which is a way of refilling the endoplasmic reticulum if it becomes depleted of calcium. Okay, then we'll move on to discussing uh, IP3 receptor signaling. Okay, so we'll look at how calcium can be released from the endoplasmic reticulum by IP3 receptors. Okay, uh, and we will discuss the two major ways that you can activate IP3 receptor signaling through the generation of IP3, which are through G protein coupled receptors working through G alpha Q uh, alpha subunits. Okay, and also through receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, uh, then once we've discussed that, we'll move on to discussing the different types of calcium signals that can be generated through IP3 receptor signaling. Okay, so we'll discuss calcium puffs and we'll contrast them to calcium waves and we'll discuss the sort of leading theory for what actually is the mechanism behind the generation of calcium waves. Okay, then what we'll talk about uh, is um, the effectors for calcium. So we'll talk about CAM kinases. Specifically, we'll talk about CAM kinase 2 because of the extraordinary potential that CAM kinase 2 has for detecting different frequencies of calcium waves and responding differently to them. Okay, then we'll talk about protein kinase C enzymes. And then uh, finally, we'll move on to uh, how calcium can affect mitochondria and uh, the respiratory chain that's occurring uh, in the mitochondria. Okay, right. Then we'll move off IP3 receptors and we'll move on to ryanodine receptors. So we'll look at uh, the type 1 ryanodine receptors which are involved in uh, skeletal muscle contraction. We'll look at the type 2 ryanodine receptors which are incredibly involved in cardiac muscle contraction. We won't at any point in this video look at type 3 ryanodine receptors. Okay, uh, then what we'll move on to is finally we'll look at an example of calcium from extracellular fluid causing a signal, okay, because all of what we've done up to that point is IP3 receptors and ranadine receptors, the release of calcium from intracellular stores. What I then want to turn my attention on to is an example of where calcium comes in from the extracellular fluid, and really the most famous example of this is in the release of uh, neurotransmitter from axon terminals. So we'll look at exocytosis of synaptic vesicles as an example of an extracellular calcium signal driving a process. Okay, right. Uh, so, the first thing then that I want to talk about is the basics of calcium signaling. Okay, so the basic idea. So we'll start off with the different important uh, organelles uh, in the cell, particularly the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, uh, so I'll start by drawing a picture of a cell then, and then we'll talk about the calcium concentrations that are normally present in a cell that is resting uh, within each of these uh, compartments. Okay, right, so this is representing my cell membrane here. Okay, and the next thing that I want to put on is the nucleus. Okay, so this is the inner nuclear membrane. So remember that the nuclear envelope doesn't just consist of a single phospholipid bilayer, it consists of two phospholipid bilayers, an inner and an outer membrane, which I'm now drawing here. Okay, and the outer membrane is continuous with the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. 
Okay, so here, this structure that I'm showing is the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this, this organelle here is the endoplasmic reticulum, which for short I'll abbreviate throughout this video down to the ER, but I suppose I should probably write out its name in four at least once. So the E is for endoplasmic, okay, and then the R is for reticulum. Okay, right, so I'll just colour code everything. So we'll colour the endoplasmic reticulum in, in blue here. Okay, so all of this, this is the endoplasmic reticulum. And you can see that the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum, the space inside the endoplasmic reticulum membrane, is continuous with this space in between the inner nuclear membrane here and the outer nuclear membrane here. Okay, so that's the endoplasmic reticulum, and that's an essential intracellular organelle if we're going to talk about calcium signaling. Okay, so now let's talk about the different calcium concentrations then in different compartments. Okay, so we'll start off with the extracellular calcium concentration. What is the concentration of calcium ions in the extracellular fluid? Okay, well, usually it's quoted at being around 1.5 millimolar. Okay, so I should put like a little one of those sort of around uh, symbols. So that's approximately equal to uh, 1.5 millimolar. Okay, um, so that's the extra cellular calcium concentration. Now, of course, that doesn't mean much until I now give you something to compare that to. Okay, so let me now tell you the intracellular calcium concentration so that we have uh, a comparison. So intracellular calcium concentration, meanwhile, is around 100 nanomolar. Okay, so now suddenly it means something, okay, because... 100 nanomolar, compare that to 1.5 millimolar, this one's 15,000 times bigger than this one, okay? So you have 15,000 times the concentration of calcium in the extracellular fluid than you do in the intracellular fluid. So now suddenly that's impressive, okay? Uh, so how is that maintained is going to be our first question, okay? And we'll see how in a moment. Right, okay, the next thing that I need to say is that inside the cell, the cytoplasm has this extremely low calcium concentration of 100 nanomolar, okay, but you do have intracellular stores of calcium, and one of the principal ones is this endoplasmic reticulum, okay, so you have a lot of calcium stored within the endoplasmic reticulum, okay. Now, the actual concentration of free calcium ions inside the endoplasmic reticulum isn't very instructive, okay, because most of the calcium that is stored in the endoplasmic reticulum is not just stored as the free ion, basically. Instead, the calcium is stored bound to proteins. Okay, so there are proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, which I'll show here, which combined a huge number of calcium ions, basically. Okay, so let me colour these in. So these proteins are being represented in purple. So let me give you the major example uh, of this protein, of these proteins that they are involved in binding calcium. So the major example is a protein called calcequestrin, okay, uh, which for short is usually abbreviated down to CSQ, okay, so C for cal, C uh, for S, uh, S for S, and then Q for question, so calcequestrin is being represented as this purple blob, basically. Okay, right, so calcequestrin is a massive great protein that has a huge number of binding sites for calcium, basically. Okay, it can bind up to 50 calcium arms. Okay, so a lot of binding sites for calcium. So you have most of the calcium that is stored in the endoplasmic reticulum bound to calcequestrin proteins, and that's why no one ever bothers to tell you the free uh, calcium concentration in the endoplasmic reticulum, because it's not actually that much more than the free calcium concentration in the cytoplasm. All the calcium in the endoplasmic reticulum is stored, mainly bound to these calcioquestrin proteins and other calcium storage proteins, but calcioquestrin is the notable example uh, that you should know. Okay, uh, so there's a lot of calcium then stored in the endoplasmic reticulum bound to these special proteins uh, called calcioquestrin proteins. Okay, right. 
Uh, so, calcium signaling then, what is the central idea of calcium signaling? So this is the resting cell state that you have a very high concentration of calcium extracellularly and then an extremely low concentration of calcium in the cytoplasm, but you do have lots of calcium stored in the ER bound to these special proteins that are in the ER lumen, such as calcium Okay, so the central idea behind calcium signaling is that we can, for a transient period of time, let calcium go up in the cytoplasm. Okay, and indeed calcium in the cytoplasm can rise up to one micromolar, okay, which is a thousand nanomolar, so it can rise by a factor of ten, basically. Okay, so calcium can rise in the cytoplasm to around one micromolar, okay, and uh, that is what we mean when we say a calcium signal. So when calcium rises from this normal resting level of one nanomolar in the cytoplasm to one micromolar, we would call this a calcium signal. And this can cause all sorts of different effects within the cell. It can cause changes in the cell's behavior. Okay, so basically there are two different ways uh, that you can get calcium in the cytoplasm to rise like this. You can either let calcium come in from the extracellular fluid Okay, so you can get calcium signals generated by extracellular calcium here, okay, which I'll highlight in orange here, or you can let calcium out from the intracellular stores. You can generate calcium signals from intracellular calcium, okay? Uh, so both of those are mechanisms for creating calcium signals. Now, when are you going to create calcium signals? Well, it's when certain receptors have been activated, okay? So when uh, extracellular signal molecules bind to receptors on the surface of the cell, they can trigger calcium signals within the cell, basically, and that's then the intracellular messenger that can carry the signal forward and cause a change in the cell's behavior, okay? So that's the fundamental idea idea of calcium signaling, that calcium is this second messenger, this intracellular messenger that's going to lead to a vast change in the cell's behavior. So uh, all sorts of signaling molecules can trigger calcium signals within a cell and thereby change the cell's behavior. Okay.